This right here is my current streak on Duolingo. Through little bits every day over four years, it helped me become conversationally fluent in German to the point where I've read over 15 books in German, I watch TV shows that are in German without English subtitles, and it's helped me grow an appreciation for German hip hop. It's pretty good. Also, I've made an entire video in German if you haven't seen that yet on my YouTube channel. But for the last two and a half years, I've been learning Spanish. Now, since joining, the app has undergone numerous changes, some arguably for the better, and some inarguably for the worst. But is Duolingo still a useful tool in 2023 to become fluent in your target language? I'd say yes, spoiler alerts. Let's talk about it, including all of my top tips for how to maximize your success on this app and get the most out of learning a language. Los gates, vamanos. Also, by the way, this video is not in any way sponsored by Duolingo. This video does have a sponsor, however, and that is Squarespace. You'll hear more about them at the end of the video with a photographic print announcement. Oh, 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 oh. So let's get this right out of the bag. There are some people on the internet that will tell you that using Duolingo is a waste of your time, and your time is much better spent moving to a foreign country or taking a one-on-one -on -one language course. And to be honest, those methods are going to be much more effective than Duolingo, but that's not really who Duolingo is competing against. Duolingo is competing against the time we all waste on our phones, social media and whatnot. Think about it, how much time do you spend doom scrolling on Twitter? Or even, let's just think about your daily commute. If you just were able to spend 15 minutes of that time commuting, learning a foreign language that's easily accessible in your pocket, that's going to add up over time. Especially considering even if you did visit a foreign country for quite a while or take a one-on-one -on -one language course, that eventually ends. And then how are you going to keep up your language? Having Duolingo as a tool in your belt, in your arsenal to keep that language alive, to maintain it and to grow it is very effective. Now, the fact they've built in gamification so well that makes it so that it's more fun to keep using it each and every day, which helps build that consistent pattern and helps build that good routine and helps actually grow your language learning, well, that's all the better. Now, I know not everybody's going to have the full time of day to watch this entire detailed YouTube video on the pros and cons of Duolingo, so I'm going to start with my most useful information first. Here are my top three best tips for maximizing your time using Duolingo, using my easiest techniques for basically getting the most you can out of it. Tip number one, always try and complete the daily quests every single day. Pretty much, if you're trying to complete them these days, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes, completing about three to four lessons. And that's really the sweet spot for arguably not that much time spent, but adding up will have a huge benefit. Obviously, it's a good idea to keep your streak by, you know, just doing one lesson a day, but you're not really gonna be growing much by just doing one lesson. Really try and hit that sweet spot of 15 to 20 minutes a day, which is going to be if you complete the daily quests. I do always skip the legendary ones though. Yeah. <laughs> Tip number two, as soon as a new exercise prompt is given to you, don't just rush down to the bubbles before Lily even gets a second or third word out of her mouth. Fart it mal. Espera, just wait a bit. As soon as they give you a prompt, listen. Just wait, listen to the whole prompt, listen to the whole sentence, try and comprehend everything that's being said, and then try and understand what they're saying. Possibly try and work out the translation before just looking down at the options that are already given to you. You're going to retain the information you learn so much better if you're recalling that information rather than if you're just choosing the options available. Think about how much more difficult it is to do an open word prompt versus a multiple choice test. And finally, tip number three, arguably the most important one, before you move on to your next prompt, always read aloud the previous prompt and the previous answer. This is really gonna help cement the language in your brain and help you with your pronunciation. As long as you're not on public transit and learning Latin, then I think people will probably think you're casting a spell or something on them. Sigmus mundus creatus est. Yeah, I wouldn't trust that guy. Just trying to restart the cycle. So yeah, just follow those three tips and you're sure to find more success in becoming fluent in your foreign language. But as a quick bonus tip, if you wanna make sure that your answer is correct before hitting the check answer button in the bottom right corner, just make sure you got four bubbles left over. You see, 99 times out of 100, if I've got five bubbles left over, if I've got three bubbles left over, something there is wrong. A lot of the times it ends up being the word that that's not necessary in English, which for some reason I'm still marked wrong. For instance, in a sentence like, I hope that you go to school. If you say, I hope you go to school, wrong. Those are the frustrating times on Duolingo, but either way, it causes me to pause and go, okay, hold on. Let me make sure there's four bubbles down there and then boom. I hope they don't patch that because it's it's a nice little trick. All right, now I think it's about time we talk about the owl in the room, okay? The Duolingo update dubbed The Path. I've had two solid months to try it out and what, like six years of the previous method. And to be completely honest, for me, I think it's a lot better for my learning style. And I was someone that really sung praises for the previous methods, like the cascading method of making sure you were going back and recursively checking your previous lessons so that you always remembered it. Because that's built into the tree now, I'm way less overwhelmed, especially if you get further down in the tree. It just felt like such a slog. Three, 
that's a video gamma joke. I don't know why I threw that in there, but <laughs> it got really, really overwhelming because you'd have to be like, okay, what do I do now? A level four lesson, level three lesson, level two lesson. I want to learn something new, but I have to make sure I'm doing these old ones. And gosh, these are so hard trying to test out the level fives. Like basically I plateaued pretty greatly using the other method, the further I got in the tree, especially because damn, those units would take like six months to a year to even get further. So it just felt like I wasn't learning that much. This new method is broken up into such nice little pockets that now they even have units set up, which is just such a better method. It's nice to see, oh, I've moved from foundations to basics to intermediate one, intermediate two. It just feels like it's much easier to see that you're actually progressing and learning a language. Whereas before, it was just kind of a big mess. That being said, the desktop version of the current app is dreadful and they have not implemented that method. So it's just an infinite snake. Sounds like my kind of video. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> and here's where the issues with the new path come in. Clearly you got two distinct teams on Duolingo that are not communicating with each other, the mobile team and the desktop team. Mobile, the A team, they get all the budget. And then desktop is a second thought. So what used to be a great feature now is a buggy mess. You have the infinite snake on desktop. If you do any daily challenges on mobile, they no longer carry over to desktop. Sometimes your gems are back to the old lingots and a completely different number on desktop. And also they're just, standard quality of life things. Like you can't even move bubbles using your mouse when you're on desktop. Something that was easily clearly coded for mobile, they just didn't bother to put it in desktop. Stuff like that's just very frustrating considering that desktop has an opportunity for better language learning experiences. It's so much better to be typing everything out manually rather than just selecting from bubbles. But I guess that's not really where the money's coming in. <laughs> One of the weird things about the path update is that with all the amazing pros that come with it, the cons are completely unnecessary. A quick example, so stories are now built into the path. Amazing, instead of just being a separate tab people might not know about, now, as you're learning, you get to learn via a story. And at the end of the story, you even get to write your thoughts about the story in your target language. That's great, 100%, such a good update. Con? They removed your access to all other stories except the ones you've done in the path as of their update. Why? Literally why? I don't understand some of the, the things that they do. That was one of my favorite things back in the day was to go to the bottom of the stories, go for the really difficult ones, challenge myself, and then I'm learning through context. That was so fun and so good feeling. Like I had that eureka moment of, I'm actually learning the language, this is so nice. And Duolingo went, no. Baby steps. We're forcing you into baby steps. We're going to remove your access to stuff for no reason. As well as they removed all of the good stories like The Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe, which used to be there. Still makes me angry. <laughs> Mostly because there was no rhyme or reason. They just removed features that were loved with no reasoning or communication. This is going to be a path in this video, you could say. For instance, Duolingo removed audio lessons and instead replaced them with an IOU from the CEO. Why? I, I don't understand. And it wasn't even like they replaced it with the IOU. They just did it wholesale. And then when people got upset about it, Lewis made a post being like, guys, we took them away from you, but we're gonna bring them back. But why not just tell us what's going on? Like, is communication that hard? Imagine if you wake up one day and you find out your camera on your phone doesn't work anymore. And after a lot of outcry over a couple days, the phone manufacturer emails everyone and goes, sorry guys, we disabled your camera, but we're working on something special. You could still use your phone though but the voicemails sound like Junior. Dios mio, no, <laughs> why? It just, it seems like just a bad move in terms of respecting your consumer, respecting your audience, taking away something without replacing it immediately and not communicating as such. This is only the second example, there are five. One of the best <laughs> things Duolingo ever implemented, which was useful in fighting against people that said that Duolingo was bad for grammar, they had tips. You could every lesson, click the little tip button and it would give you a little lesson. It'd be like, oh, we're gonna le learn about this stuff with shoe verbs and oh, that's useful. And then they just removed it, just took them away. What reasoning? None. What announcement? None. They just did it because they can. The owl makes the rules. He's he's ruling like a despot polyglot, a poly desplot. <laughs> that didn't really work. Owl stop there. The owl giveth and the owl taketh away. And in its stead, we have been replaced with an example sentence of what you might see in the lesson. You know, like you could also get by just clicking into the lesson. Why? Do not know. It's like if they were teaching math, which supposedly they are, and you had a prompt which was, two squared equals two times two equals four. And that was in the little lesson. Sweet. And they replaced it with four. Good luck. <laughs>
<laughs> Buena suerte. And the worst of all their updates was removing access to the forums and the comment section, an incredibly useful feature where at any single prompt that you had a question with, you could just click the comments and then be like, I don't understand why it's like this. And then someone would give you an incredibly detailed bit of information, possibly a source, and you'd be able to learn more effectively. And then they just removed that. I don't know why. They didn't say why. Bye-bye, we're retiring it, don't wanna deal with it. It's not even like it was unmoderated. I saw moderators in there all the time. They'd lock threads sometimes if something was arguably maybe a little funny sounding. Just take it away, you know? And it's really annoying because I really rep the app. I really enjoy the app for the most part and there are really useful features of it, but the lack of communication, the constant removal of features for an app that is free, but a lot of people do pay for, puts a really bad taste in my mouth. I, for one, pay, and I do think Super Duolingo has a lot of good features. I mean, just having no ads alone, really useful. I don't even think about hearts. I just learn the way I want. I don't really use any of the other extra features like progress quizzes. I've tried them, they're nice. At the end of the day, I bought Super Duolingo because I wanted to support the company for helping me learn German and helping me learn Spanish. And it just doesn't really feel good as a user to have them constantly removing features without any communication or plans to bring them back. You know, this sounds like quite a negative Nancy video and I do apologize for that. I, at the end of the day, I do still really like the app. I also just wanna communicate there's some nuance here and there's some issues. And now onto feature requests. I do think it'd be nice to be able to test out of individual lessons rather than have to test out of an entire chapter of lessons. Cause there are some in there that you might not know, but sometimes you just get the same one that you're like, listen, I understand this concept well, well, well beyond at this point. I don't need to do it six times. Luckily they have implemented a feature where if I can't really find out when this happens. It's kind of random at this point, but if you get the first two goes of a lesson perfect, sometimes Duo will give you the opportunity to just skip ahead. Thanks, that's great. I wish I could do that manually, but th it's a start. I'm back in the Diamond League. I've been doing a lot of Duolingo to uh, prepare for this video and I'm back in the top, baby. Now, I know a lot of people really care about the current meta for leagues because they wanna be better than their friends or be able to win the Diamond League and whatnot. Well, the current meta is very different from my video last year because they're always updating things. First of all, you do really wanna make sure you have a two times multiplier. You can get one of those easily by just completing a round of lessons or by starting in the morning on Duolingo and coming back to claim your two times multiplier at 6 p.m or even sometimes a friend can give one to you during a friend's quest. Either way, make sure you've got your two times multiplier and then just go to the leagues tab, go to the match game, one of the two of them, and then just go for it. You can get like 100 XP a go and it's just crazy. Do note, it's pretty much impossible to do the match game at the later stages where you get like 140 XP without using a purchased upgrade. And also the match game isn't really useful for learning a language. It pretty much is just farming XP. Oh, but you're matching the words to the translations. You're not really, you're not really thinking you're just reacting. It's more about your reaction time than it is about learning, and you're never going to progress more than the basic words like man, milk, and mother. So I wouldn't recommend it, but if you wanna just get XP quickly, there's your ticket. You can either do that, or after you get two times XP, go to legendary status for a lesson, cause that's like 90 XP, so that's also pretty good. One thing that is a little frustrating is when a friend gifts you your two times multiplier, and it makes you use it right then and there. I wish it could just like keep it safe, so I could use it whenever I want. That'd be nice. As a lovely little positive, I like that they added the number of years your streak is on your leagues window so other people can look and be like, holy crap, that man's a freak. Six years, what? I saw a guy that had seven years the other day and I was like, dang, you make me feel tiny. <laughs> but I really like that they've been building out the profiles and making it so that, you know, you got your badges there, you have your league there. It's quite nice. The one issue I have is that they do remove trophies that you've rightfully earned if they've changed features though. For instance, I definitely used to have a trophy based on the number of crowns I'd earned, but once they changed from crowns, they just went, goodbye trophy. It'd be kind of nice if legacy users had legacy trophies. It's something that I feel like Neopets used to do back in the day. And it's a way of treating your legacy users with respect, giving them cool cred. Let me keep my trophies and my badges, you know? <laughs> it's not big an ass, come on. Going forward, I do hope Duolingo uses 2023 as an opportunity to possibly communicate better with its community because good communication breeds good confidence in the platform and that would just make everyone a lot happier. That being said, if they wanna give me some owl wings, fly me out to Pittsburgh, let me see a peek behind the curtain, I also would be okay with that. I am not a hater. I am a lover of the app actually. And when you love something, you wanna fight for it to be good. Y you know, that tough love. Get to whack that out. <laughs> if you really love something, you need to be able to talk about its flaws and hopefully make it be a better thing. You might think I'm a psycho, but I'm not a psychophant. He's texting me right now. Duo, stop it. I haven't done it yet. I've been uh, working on this video pretty much all day. Before I wrap all this up, I'm going to be setting myself a hard deadline 
in regards to releasing my next series of photographic prints, because God knows I don't work well unless I have some sort of deadline. Now, I'm going to have to choose which photos, choose the colors, choose which paper, work on my logistics, write the story for each one and make sure it's up to scratch. But the easiest part of this whole process is actually listing the stuff on my storefront that I made with today's video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is your all-in-one website builder that helps you get professionally made, well-designed looking websites at the palm of your hands. Whether you're like me and you wanna have a professional place to showcase all of your portfolio of works, or you're also like me and you'd like a storefront to be able to sell people your Lightroom presets or your camera LUTs, Squarespace makes the whole thing a breeze. And with their 24 seven customer support, it can be easy for you to make an incredibly well-designed website, even if you're a true beginner. You can even make a page on your website, getting people to sign up to your mailing list so you can tell them when your photographic prints are going on sale. It's gonna be in March. But if you like the look of EvanEdinger.com and you'd like to make a website of your own, sign up to squarespace.com slash EvanEdinger or use code EvanEdinger checkout for 10% off and a free trial of the whole month. You'll love it. So thank you, Squarespace, and let's wrap this up. So am I gonna continue using Duolingo in 2023? Absolutely. I gotta keep that streak alive, but also, I still find it very effective and I really enjoy just spending a little bit every day and finding myself actually learning a foreign language. It's pretty cool. And if you ever need any extra motivation, just follow me on Duolingo and try and make sure you have more XP than me every single week. I'm sure you'll be learning then. <laughs> but I do still find the German language itself to be quite funny. That's why I made these two videos poking fun at the interesting differences between English and German. So do check those out if you haven't yet. Lots of sketches, lots of humor, lots of German. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next Sunday. Bye. Tschüss. Adios.